David, Frank, Lizette, and Mr. Jacobs. All have a greatly misunderstood neurological involuntary movement disorder. A disorder that is frequently misdiagnosed and all too often undiagnosed. Tourette syndrome, a guide to diagnosis. Just being familiar with Tourette's symptomatology and diagnosis will enable the physician to offer such patients considerable comfort and hope. You will have an opportunity to observe Tourette syndrome patients being interviewed by Dr. Ruth Broom. And in a roundtable discussion between Dr. Oren Palmer, a physician with Tourette's, and Dash and Gwen, a brother and sister who have TS, a genetically transmitted disorder. The patients participating in this videotape were chosen in part because of their severe symptomatology. Most patients you will see in practice will have less severe symptoms, but they will exhibit similar patterns of the multiform and frequently changing motor and vocal tics that characterize Tourette syndrome. Because of the multiform aspect of TS, you will observe throughout the videotape overlapping examples of the three basic categories of symptoms vocal motor and behavioral simple motor tics are fast darting and meaningless muscular events such as eye blinking nose twitching lip pouting eye rolling shoulder shrugs abdominal tensing head and extremity jerks kicks finger movements jaw snaps, and tooth clicking. Complex motor tics involve several muscle groups and may appear more purposeful than simple motor tics. Touching, holding expressions or postures, picking at scabs or the nose, finger drumming. They can include such movements as kissing, hopping, clapping, gyrating, and touching the ground. They may also include self-injurious movements such as hitting oneself and poking one's eye. Some patients, like Dr. Palmer, will exhibit sustained movements not typically thought of as tics. Simple vocal tics appear as meaningless sounds and noises. Complex vocal tics they would do it. by comparison are linguistically meaningful utterances, words, phrases, and statements. Uh, do it. They often occur at the initiation of speech, the beginning of a sentence, you? or at a phrase transition. Other tic symptoms. Patients will often describe a feeling of tension relieved by ticking. In fact, it feels sometimes that there is something building up inside, a tenseness, and the, that causes the twitch. The, there's a little relief with the twitch, but whatever causes the twitch, if it's a little tension, keeps building up. Some TS patients tend to imitate what they've just heard, echolalia. I, I, always, I always have to do that. If I hear somebody say something and like... If it's, if it's shouted a lot, I have to totally repeat it. Others will repeat what they themselves have just said. Palalalia. In a conversation, and if I just met a person, and, he'll, and he or she would say, how you doing? And I'm like, hi, how are you, how are you, how are you? You know? I mean, once is enough. <laughs> you know, you can't keep asking how are you three times in less than a minute, you know? Still others will imitate movements they have just seen. Echopraxia. The most dramatic and socially distressing complex vocal symptom of TS actually occurs in less than a third of all patients. Um, do the teachers understand what the problem is? Fuck! They... No! Fuck! Well, in fifth grade, fuck, I was... Coprolalia. And, um, the explosive utterance of foul or obscene words or more elaborate sexual and or aggressive statements. Coprolalia is not a necessary criteria for a diagnosis of TS. What do you think of all the symptoms you've ever had? What do you think has been the most difficult? 
problem with the coprolalia was the most difficult because uh, it's just so totally unacceptable. I remember saying, um, one of the words that came to me very first was, were, were anatomy parts, were big in coprolalia, uh, that I was uh, using, using various anatomy parts and combining them with uh, certain Christian deities and things like that. Similarly, copropraxia, a complex motor tick of obscene gestures, is a dramatic but not common symptom. Diagnostic criteria for TS must include both multiple motor and one or more vocal tics. These need not occur concurrently. Tics must be present for more than one year, occurring many times per day, nearly every day or intermittently. Onset occurs before age 21. Naturally, patients taking medications known to induce dyskinesia are excluded. Symptoms will change in anatomic location, variety, and intensity on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, especially in younger people. Have you found that it uh, remains the same, or do you find that it gets better and gets worse, so-called waxing and waning? When I used to have it pretty badly, it did definitely. I don't know what, why it did, but some days, some, for, for a period of time, it was really bad. And then for a while, it wouldn't be so bad at all. You know, now um, it's basically not that bad most of the time, because like, especially if I'm focused, if I'm really focused all the time. Mm -hmm. So you find that the, it gets worse and then better and then worse and better? Yeah. It does. So it doesn't remain at the same level? Oh, no, so never, bad. never. Do you find that one type of symptom ultimately gets replaced by another type, mm -hmm. that one transforms into another type? Maybe the shaking of the head would, would all of a sudden mm -hmm. be replaced by going like... Or... or uh, or I always had things with my nose also, I'm always having to play with my nose and, and go like this. Yeah. And uh, a lot of facial tics also, and I, I also have, I mean, a lot of, like, it, it doesn't only <coughs> replace by, like, something that's, like, not only if I, would I replace an eye tick with a nose tick, but sometimes, I mean, they wouldn't always replace, I just add on, and it would, the, uh, the tics would eventually fade out, and this one would take over mm -hmm. or something. But I always had a variety of them. Often the disorder's natural progression is to worsen for a decade and then improve as the patient reaches maturity. Naturally, there are exceptions. It is something that comes, it lets up, it lets up temporarily and it returns. And I've had remission through the years. The first one in my mid-twenties stayed away two weeks. Thought I was rid of it but it comes back on again very, very slowly and it grows in intensity until it reaches the stage that it was in before it left. Can you tell me when you first yeah. had yeah. any kind of symptoms of Tourette syndrome? I very well remember it because all was well until I was seven years old. <laughs> and then, then suddenly, out of nowhere, these irregular movements started. This would have been what year approximately now? Seven, nine, uh, 1916. Capacity for control and conditions affecting severity. Well, how about um, if you've been trying to control it, how long can you control it? I can't, it's impossible. What? It's impossible. You can't control it at all? No. I've never timed it, but under certain conditions or maybe certain pressures or when I'm with people, mm -hmm. It's been controlled for, to mention by the time by the clock, it's difficult. But it's well, been approximately. Been controlled an hour, two hours. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I'm alone or away for them in between the meeting, we have not, the twitch would come on back. It's like a relief. Could you stop it? No. Not at all? Even for a little bit of time? For f five minutes, and then I'd have to do it. And if you held it in for five minutes, what would happen? Do you I just had to do it. The capacity for control varies from patient to patient. As they mature, they develop their own ways to modify or disguise their symptoms. Have you ever found that you're able to sort of change or transform <laughs> one type of symptom <laughs> into another? Yeah, to try to lessen it, to internalize it or something. I never, I don't remember thinking about it, but um, 
don't know if I had to blink, you know, I'd do something like this, or I just, I try to do something that was similar, oh, that looked yeah. more normal, kind yeah, of Yeah, you try like and that. get it into your normal <laughs> thing. Later, as I understood, I could, I could uh, 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 edit them into just short ticks and barks to where something that would be a uh, two or three letter curse word would go into just a, that, that sort of thing. Like that, so, so you kind of slid over it. So right, opening. right, yeah. And, and I found now, since I've gotten older, rather than uh, 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 involving myself with corporalia, I will do that automatically, that editing process. Generally, anxiety, stress, and excitement tend to exacerbate Tourette's symptoms, while relaxation and intense concentration can help alleviate them. However, relaxation can also mean less control and therefore more frequent and severe ticks. Do you find certain things might make it worse or make it better? Um, stress definitely, but actually, or when I'm excited about something, I'm feeling positive about something and very relaxed in myself, the ticks will suddenly come out. Uh -huh. Whereas if I'm feeling self-conscious or shy or anything, I, I just naturally like don't do it. How about you, Dash? Have you found that? Um, certain types of stimuli will make it worse? Yeah, well, when I'm more, I mean, <coughs> When I'm more relaxed, they usually come out. But when I'm doing, I mean, you? whenever I'm doing an activity, or I'm really and into you? something, or if I'm doing sports or something, it usually, mm. and when mm. I'm putting my mind on a game uh -huh. or something like that, if it's like active especially, I can usually get, get the ticks off. I mean, I still do it, but it, to a lesser extent. I don't do it at all, but I'm alone. Now, if someone comes into the house, or if the phone rings, or if there's a commercial on, that's when I tour it. Of course, when I was a kid, there, was, there were almost these uh, consistent patterns. Christmas time, uh, the ticks would be aggravated and exacerbated, and they would uh, uh, build up uh, around spring vacation. That would happen as well, and toward the end of school when summer started. And they would be very active the first part of summer, then they'd die down in the middle of summer. Then they'd get a little more active again uh, when so the school year started excitement, again. really. Excitement, than, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think one of the interesting things you told me was that um, you're an actor, and when you act, you don't have any trouble with these ticks. Yeah, that's right. I, I, and I guess that th that's a very strange thing, because, uh, and it's true. It's 100% correct. When I'm on stage, I tend not to tick anyway. I don't know. Maybe there's a uh, there's there's a clarity involved in terms of of the performance. In 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 the at least in a stage situation or an acting situation, it's very clear when you speak. There's nothing. Uh, there's no gray area. So I know that uh, in this instant that I'm speaking my lines, I have full attention, full focus, so I don't become self-conscious and tick. If I have an argument with my wife and we're yelling at each other, I might find that my symptoms get a lot better. I'm so caught into the fighting that I don't really notice, but I, I would think, yeah, they do, they do lessen because, you know, I have my focus on, you know, screaming at this person. I think that's probably it. You're so focused and concentrating on that one thing. But you don't really notice because th all that you're thinking about is, is, is being angry. Both positive and negative tension can exacerbate symptoms. Ticks may continue during sleep, but are markedly reduced. I'd fall asleep. Or I'd sleep through the night. There wasn't a movement. <laughs> Behavioral aspects. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. ADHD. Up to 50% of children with TS also have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Attention deficits may persist into adulthood. Um, I think you've had some other troubles too, like troubles concentrating in school and... Not staying still. Not sitting still, right. Is that very difficult for you? Mm, a little. More so for you than you think for the other kids in your class? Yeah. Do you remember having a short attack? I do, and to this day I do. I remember with a very, very difficult thing for me to do was to get through four or five pages reading. Uh, and to this day, I, I, I don't read uh, novels or I don't read much of length at all, when, but what I do read is short articles. Aside from the troubles you had at school, you know, with the children and, and the social problems you had at school, uh, did you have problems doing the work and learning? No, fuck. Yes, I couldn't, um, to this day I can't read a book. I can read something short and retain it, but I can't read four or five pages. Why, what happens exactly? I, it just, it just won't stay in. 
just I, I, I can't concentrate. Patients with TS and ADHD will have a great deal of trouble with impulse control. Behavioral aspects, obsessions and compulsions. Many Tourette's patients of all ages are burdened with obsessive compulsive behavior. Do you ever have thoughts that you don't want that? Yeah, that just keep coming back. I also associate that with like when a song gets into your head, yeah. especially a song I do not like. It takes me three times as long to get it out of my head than anybody else. And I'll just be singing it the whole day. Or even I won't be singing it, but I'll be breathing it. Like I'll be going. That can be very tormenting. And it just goes on and on, and I don't like the song. I and it just, I, I can't get rid of it for like a day. I'll, so occasionally I'll even wake up the next morning. Do you ever engage in certain types of, say, oh, ritualistic behavior, <laughs> where you'd have to do something oh, a certain number God. of times, touch something, arrange things a certain way, like two, sh like a pair of shoes will have to be exactly a certain distance apart and exactly parallel to each other? Do you, oh, you, you want to go first? <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, I haven't had that for a while, but I remember mm -hmm. when I was younger having to have things arranged a certain way, mm -hmm. or papers had to be, you know, even and things like that, more than just because I wanted to be neat, but because it was just like, really compulsive. I have so many rituals at home even now. Do you find I, that if you do not give in to the ritual that something terrible will happen? Does anything like that enter your mind or is it just that you don't feel comfortable? To me, no. I just mm -hmm. know that I have to do it and I don't think about anything else. When I try and say, I just, it's like, I don't know why, but I just always have to go back to it for really no reason. I always have to jump up in the middle of the air, turn the light on and off. Mm -hmm. before I land mm -hmm. and I, I mean I have to get it right and it's occasionally I have to get the exact uh, click of the light with when my feet touch the ground and occasionally like you know if I stop I it's it's yeah I, I it gets a little confusing. Do you ever do it so many times that you actually hurt your finger? Yeah oh I, I always hurt myself if I know not to touch something I'll always have to think about it and I'll go crazy <laughs> trying not to touch it like a hot stove. I mean, I always yeah. touch hot stoves. I burn my fingers so much, I, <laughs> I don't even feel them anymore. But um, I'm always, and um, my mom always tries to get me out of the kitchen. So it compels you to do things you don't want to do. Yeah, definitely. Things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Right. Have you ever had um, certain things you needed to do, like certain compulsions to do things a certain way? Um, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Like. Bitch, when I'm, well, when I'm eating, I have to, I just have to smell the food all the time. My roommate gets very upset. She's like, L Lisa, why, you know? Why do you smell your food? And I say, it's part of my Tourette. She goes, okay. Attention deficits, compulsions, and obsessions can seriously impair school and job performance. Difficulties of diagnosis. By nature, a disparate set of symptoms Tourette syndrome has not been readily diagnosed and is often misdiagnosed. Sniffing and vocalizations are wrongly attributed to allergies. Often children are sent to psychologists for supposed nervous problems. A frequently blinking child is thought to have eye problems. I, I first had tics when I was five and I went till the age of 13 till I was diagnosed from doctor to doctor oh, to doctor. Well, I went to a psychologist first uh, at a local mental, mental health clinic and they did a lot of uh, uh, therapy stuff, of course. You know, I remember going through the Rorschach pictures and play therapy and all that stuff. And I think at that time I was given uh, placebos to see what the effect of uh, uh, of just telling someone, you know, or, or whatever, whatever the medical effect of giving someone placebos is. That's what they did. My pa well, my mom took me to a lot of um, churches, religions, and um, all spiritualism. Were you cursing at that time? Was was that why she took you to churches? Because yeah. she thought it was... Um, yeah, you know, she was like, well, uh, why, you know? I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. So what did you think? Well, deep inside I knew, I always knew there was a reason why I did this. I didn't think I was going crazy or I was possessed. I knew there was a reason why I did it. After more than 70 years, you finally, finally found out that you had Tourette's syndrome. Can you tell me, how did that happen? I was, had a magazine, and then there was an article. I don't even remember the name of the magazine. It was an in-depth article 
by this woman, a psychologist. Mm -hmm. She wrote about Tourette's symptoms. <clears throat> she described them fully. And as I read this, I felt she's, she was looking at me and describing everything I had and was doing. But basically, you diagnosed yourself, and then it was confirmed by a doctor, but you made the diagnosis, right? I felt that's what I had, put it yeah. that way. Symptoms will frequently be suppressed in the doctor's office. Discreet observation of the patient in the waiting room or through peripheral vision during examination may be necessary. A diagnosis must be made on symptomatology and a careful history. Tests such as EEGs and CAT scans are only useful to exclude other conditions and only if they are seriously considered as part of a differential. The following patients illustrate a few neurological disorders which might, in certain instances, be confused with Tourette syndrome. This is a 14-year-old boy with congenital choreoathetosis. The choreic movements, especially in his extremities, are similar to tics in that they are involuntary, purposeless, abrupt, rapid, and may be suppressed to some degree. However, you will note that they are more continuous, flowing, and irregular, and do not have the stereotypic nature of tics. This 13-year-old boy has Sydenham's chorea, a condition which has fairly often been confused with Tourette syndrome. Again, you will notice that the movements are more continuous and irregular than typical tics. Also, while there may be dysarthria, vocal tics are not characteristic of chorea. A milkmaid's grip in which the hand muscles alternately contract and relax is one diagnostic sign of chorea. In the case of Sydenham's chorea, streptococcal antibody test will also be helpful. This man has neuroacanthocytosis with choreiform movements and tics. The pelvic thrusting movement shown here might be mistaken for copropraxia. Tics of the truncal and pelvic muscles may appear similar to this when they are severe. The finger snapping movements are also similar to those seen in Tourette patients. However, neuroacanthocytosis is a multi-system progressive disease and is easily diagnosed with an examination of the patient's erythrocytes. This young child has Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. The combination of choreoathetoid movements and self-mutilating behavior, which are characteristics of this disorder, could cause it to resemble Tourette syndrome. A small number of Tourette patients have self-injurious tics. However, hyperuricemia readily distinguishes Lesch-Nyhan patients. The next patient has Rett's syndrome. Note the stereotypical hand movements. Rett's syndrome affects only females. These children will have autistic behavior, intellectual deterioration, and EEG abnormalities. Myoclonic jerks may more closely resemble simple tics than choreic movements. They are sudden, brief, shock-like, and involuntary in nature. They may be irregular or rhythmical and may be triggered by sudden stimuli such as light or noise. They are not suppressible as tics are. An EEG may be diagnostic in these patients. This patient has tardive dyskinesia. Typical manifestations of this disorder are tongue thrusting, chewing movements of the jaw, lip pouting, puckering and smacking, cheek blowing and sucking, blepharospasm, dysarthria, grunting and other guttural sounds. Choreiform movements of the extremities also occur, particularly in children. The movements are suppressible to a degree and stereotypic. Differentiating tardive dyskinesia from tics is not difficult if the onset of tics has been known to precede treatment with neuroleptic medication. It is important, however, to keep in mind that the neuroleptics that are often used to treat Tourette syndrome may result in tardive dyskinesia and that the two disorders may occur concurrently. Finally, it must be kept in mind that not all people with tic disorders have Tourette syndrome. Tic disorders are divided into three categories. The mildest is transient tic disorder, which occurs before age 21 and consists of single or multiple motor and or vocal tics, which last more than two weeks but not as long as a year. Chronic motor or vocal tic disorder lasts for more than a year, but is distinguished from Tourette disorder in that there are either motor or vocal tics, 
but not both. Actually, these distinctions may be artificial, since there is considerable evidence that the three types of tic disorders are merely different symptomatic expressions of the same underlying dysfunction. Ticks of all sorts are more common in families of patients with Tourette syndrome than in the general population. Several medications are available for the treatment of TS, but so far none will completely control symptoms. All may have undesirable side effects for some patients. However, this video program is intended as a guide to diagnosis and not to treatment, for which other materials are available. One of the most effective steps that you, the physician, can take is to provide a timely and accurate diagnosis. I was diagnosed at 12, and I, it had a name, and I was happy that it had a name. That made a big difference, yeah. too. Early and accurate diagnosis of Tourette syndrome can offer profound relief to patient and family alike. The Tourette Syndrome Association offers programs and materials that assist and educate professionals and families coping with the disorder.